As Iran's protests grew in volume and scale nationwide, the Western powers jumped enthusiastically upon the bandwagon. Perhaps this could be the end of the Islamic Republic, inshallah. Well, not inshallah, because they're the Islamic Republic, not us. But you get the point. Western powers, of course, see the Iranian, quote, regime as the oppressive one and being non-Western, being backwards. And that, of course, is, according to some, the cardinal sin. You dare have your own customs, your own values completely foreign to me. Obviously, I'm the default, the center of the earth, if not the universe. So, you know, you should fall in line. Don't make me come over there. Don't make me come over there and deliver some piping hot freedom. Listen to your citizens. Even if they're setting fire to mosques, which I don't think Iranian citizens do. I wonder who, who, who's doing that. But anyway, as the protests grew, the Iranian state made increasingly louder and louder claims. Foreign agents, the government said, were hijacking the protests that started off complaining about the economic woes. And those foreign agents, according to the Iranian state, were turning those protests into something altogether unacceptable. They were turning them into riots and demands for regime change. And people inside Iran were reportedly being coordinated and egged on by people outside of the country. This is the Iranian state narrative that you might not hear in the Western language, which I'm speaking because the lingua franca of, franca of the West is English and the Western spin is very heavy. The, the news you will likely receive is that the protesters are all peaceful and the repressive evil is, you know, Islamic Republic government and the IRGC is violently cracking down. You won't hear the other side so that you can contextualize things and do further research. You won't get that, ban that, just follow Times of Israel because, of course, they're not biased at all. They're not spinning the news. Now, the government were having none of it. This idea that foreign agents were coordinating from outside Iran, coordinating riots within Iran. So just four days ago, the government shut down the internet nationwide. Blackout. No doubt, if there were peaceful, legitimate protests, uh, a nationwide blackout will shut that up, for better or worse. But here's where it gets crazy, and we finally arrive at the topic of the video, probably at the top of my head here, after extensive meandering. If you're new here, my name is Muffles, and meandering is, well, Muffles actually is my middle name, but meandering is not far off. This is unfortunately how I operate. But now let's get to the topic. Elon Musk's Starlink, an American company that provides Wi-Fi and internet services through the use of sophisticated satellite mesh networks floating above planet Earth, that Starlink was deployed over the skies of Iran. The people would have internet access. To hell with what their government wants. We're giving them the webs, brother. Iran's government reportedly deployed military-grade jamming technology to block Starlink satellite-based internet access and took it down, dragging the blackout back into place over the skies of Iran as per the wishes of the state. Amir Rashidi, a cybersecurity expert who has monitored internet freedom in Iran for the last two decades, reported that he had never seen anything like this. The jamming started with 30% of Starlink traffic reportedly being blocked and then rocketed up to 80% of all internet traffic being blocked in some regions of Iran. Basically making connection very unreliable, not workable. The sophisticated electronic warfare equipment is believed to have originated from Russia and or China, suggesting cooperation between these three countries in military technology sharing. No surprise there, in other news, water is wet and America loves freedom. I mean oil. No doubt, eyebrows were raised, especially in the Western world, because, well, a nation as economically as crippled as Iran, 50 years we've kept these guys under choking sanctions. God, how are they still doing stuff? Right, a nation as economically under pressure through sanctions as Iran, managing to build stuff that can take down some of the most advanced technology of some of the most advanced corporations the West has to offer, which was previously thought to be, in some cases, unstoppable, unblockable, this, that, and the other. That's not the kind of surprise that states want to have sprung on them. Surprise! Your technology is overpriced and overrated. Yeah! No. No one like, no one wants that. And Iran's basically saying, my technology? Yeah, well, my technology is scrappy and cheap and not taken seriously by you guys. All the better for me if it smacks you in the face and leaves you looking like a shocked Pikachu afterwards. Now back to the protest, to summarise. 
for now it seems calm is returning to the streets, which of course, even though I am unbiased in my reporting, I will be biased towards saving human lives. Okay, I, I, oh, you, you caught me, right? So if there's calm returning to the streets, very likely loss of life will taper off, which we can all hope for, I think. Reports suggest Thursday was... Uh, Thursday of last week was the worst day of the protests and riots. But those are in Iranian government reports, to be fair. So we won't know for sure until information is more widely available. After all, we can't trust the Iranian government with anything, right? I'll keep you posted, though. With the unbiased news and analysis without the Western spin, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure why I'm talking in this voice. But now that I have started, I cannot stop. I'll see you on the next one. <coughs>